All right, in this video, we're gonna build a huge pergola made out of Brazilian hardwood, and we're gonna install these sails. Stay with us, because this is a great way to get shade in the backyard. We are going to put some anchors in the ground and get this party started. Are you ready to work? Let's do it. Beautiful, baby. Let's Usually on our channel, we try to do things with pretty basic tools. Yep. Today, we are upping it just a bit. We've got a hammer drill, which is not a big investment. Um, and if you don't have one, you can rent it for four hours to do this project. And we have our simple grinder. It's not plugged in yet. Good. With a cutoff disc. And what we're using is powder-coated metal brackets. Now, this is really important because the folks at Advantage Lumber have advised us that when you're working with this hardwood, you've got to use you know, stainless steel or this powder coated metal. If you use galvanized, after a few years, it's gonna get this whole, I'm so sad, I'm crying look, right? Oh, wow. Just black lines everywhere. Yucky. So to avoid that, use the right materials. So we're gonna just drill some holes. We're gonna fill it with hydraulic cement. Okay. And then we're gonna cut this down a little bit so we don't have to drill nine inches deep. Cause this is not new concrete, far. right? No, it's not. And then we'll set them in place and we'll tap con some screws into them. Get these posts installed. You know, hey. and then we're halfway to a pergola. We've done a lot today. Yeah, it's been a busy day. <laughs> it's been but a good day. All right, so I'm gonna let you drill that hole. You see this groove here? If you put your hand in it like that, yeah, then you'll 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 have be a nice control there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just give everybody. Okay. Yeah. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. That's good. Yeah. I'll show you how is this done, okay? There we go. Okay, so there are a lot of ways to install a pergola post. Um, some of these systems are out there, they're just, you attach the bottom of the post, you screw it into the ground, I'm not a big fan of that. I like to have a, the bolt anchored in there. This is a really long hole to drill and usually we use these when we're using uh, new concrete. So we're just gonna cut these down as we go around, get these nice and flush, tap con them through the surface as well. That'll give us lots of protection with the hydraulic cement from lift because we're gonna be putting in sun sails and we are gonna have lift. So we better have this secured. Use glasses when you're doing this at home. To set our posts in the holes, which are larger than they need to be, we're gonna just use a little bit of fast concrete repair. It's basically hydraulic cement. Uh, once we get it mixed up, it'll set up in about 15 or 20 minutes, and then we'll be good to install posts within a, within a half an hour after that. All right, after, let's do this. We'll mix right into the bucket. Uh, they're only six bucks. <laughs> I already got rid of a lot of it. All right, we're supposed to just mix it to a slurry. I read the instructions, and it said mix until it's like a slurry. I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know how much water it takes to get to that point, right? Yeah. That is beautiful, yeah. And now I'll just scrape out all the corners now, get all that dry stuff mixed in, okay? There we go. So we're just gonna fill all six holes with this stuff. It sets really quick, eh? Yeah, really quick. Oh, oh. Opa. oh, okay. Always ready, always solving the problem. All right, now. Good enough? Done. Good That's morning. not going anywhere. Going anywhere. <laughs> so we have our saddles in place. We used a quick set cement. It was dry, I don't know, what, three minutes later, but it's the next day now, so no worries there. We're not gonna bother with the tap cons. We checked it out this morning and they are not going anywhere. Unfortunately, our slab is an unlevel surface. Hopefully, if you're building a pergola at home, you are working with a level surface, and then you won't have to do what I'm doing now, but I'm gonna teach you an amazing trick for whenever you need a level that's extremely long. What we have is three two by fours here. I've taken two of them, and I've just stretched them out the full length that I need, which is 190 inches, and in feet, it's just a whole bunch. So, <laughs> what we're gonna do is screw this together and create this L shape with the third part, 
and we're going to use this to stretch from saddle to saddle to saddle and get the actual measurement for the height difference on the top of the saddle for each post and then we can translate that information onto our post that way we can pre-cut them and get the end sealed in wax because that is so important when you're working with this product i've been warned not to drill all the way through into the deck it's early in the morning and my latte has yet to really kick in <laughs> nice here yeah. Once we have this assembled, we can stretch it across the saddles, get our measurements, because there is just nothing better than having perfectly level product to work with. So we know from measuring earlier that the highest point on this slab is actually right over here, but the saddle on the other side over here is actually the highest saddle on the slab. It was installed about a half an inch above the concrete, so we're using that as our measuring stick to go for every corner to get all of our heights. <laughs> so we just put our little stick here across, added some shims, found our level mark, that works good. So since the level is sitting in the saddle on the other side, we're just gonna measure from the bottom of the two by four down to the concrete. We're gonna add that distance to the top of the post on this location. And that measurement is three and three eighths. Careful, when you're measuring something like that, you've gotta get down eye level with it. You can't guess or you'll get it wrong. And we're just gonna write that down right on the concrete. We're just gonna do that in every location. And then we'll cut our posts. Two by four. So the right side's still higher. Tell me when. Right about there. One and a half. I'll get you to read it. And then I'll measure it off. About that. Okay, two and an eighth. That's about what we figured, five inches off. Are you, are you on it now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it will level. Yeah? It'll go above it. Yeah. Two and a half. Beautiful. There we go. Now we're done. So the first step in doing your pergola is not to put the posts up. The first step is to actually measure off your posts, but you want to build your carrying beams. And by that, I mean the long support that's going to go from corner to corner. In this situation, we're spanning 15 feet, so we really want to have a laminated beam which is two pieces of the two by material glued and screwed together to create that whole length. We want to set that up first, give it time to dry, and then when we can bring it over in place. And the way you do that is you measure from the outside of your saddle to the outside of the saddle. And as long as all your measurements are consistent with where the saddles are sitting, you'll make it perfectly square and level building. If you start using a level and then measuring from top to top, you're heading for disaster. Now, traditionally a lot of the material that will come from the factory it's not cut perfectly square on the ends, so you can't really trust it. Uh, it's always best before you install major pieces like this to cut it square, get a nice edge, especially if you're laminating, because when you bring those joints together, if it's even cut at one degree, it's gonna look really ugly and have an open gap. So we're gonna just trim back all of our boards before we get started, and then when we measure it, we're gonna have something that we can work with. Just another little tip when you're cutting something like this, Make sure the part that you want to keep is on the downside, and that'll leave the cleanest cut. Always going to get a little bit of fraying on the, on the top surface when you're using a saw like this. All righty, mama. So now it's time to screw and glue the beam together. We are using a PL Premium basic construction adhesive. They are going to make this from a lot of different places all over the world, and they do not clean up very well. <laughs> right? We're going to just turn this over, rest this in place, and it is not an instant bond, so you have time to line things up. And we are actually designing this, so this is the face of my beam, and that'll be the outside corner of my post. And so I've created an inside miter to receive the thickness of the second joint. I'm going to slide that over one and a half inches, and I am going to glue this whole thing together all at once. Yeah. Alright, we will start with the screwing process down at this end, making sure we're staying, keeping everything tight, flush and level as we move our way along the beam. Good, so just make sure that your drill bit when you're pre-drilling isn't going to come through the other side of the wood. And we're going to just put in a few screws here to tighten this all up.
Yeah. It makes good sense to clean that as you go, eh? I think I'm going to go all silver. So I'm going to completely fill the end of this meat with the with the glue so I don't have to use the end sealer. And then we will put that piece together. Gotta love woodworking without a word shop. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, remember, if you're using this product, you've got to use the sealer. This is a wax-based sealer. It goes on all your end cuts. This will keep your product from drying out and splitting on you. Here we go. And just wipe off any extra. So, okay, so we've completed our carrying beams. We've pre-drilled and glued and screwed and got them all clamped together and drying over there now. So now it's time to put up our posts. We've got our measurements, so now we're going to translate all that information onto our post. Our baseline is 102 inches, and that's the high post. And now we just add all the dimensions off our leveling system to that number, put it on the tape, on the post themselves. Again, because it's hardwood, we are going to take the post, we're going to square off the base in case the mill has it unsquare. We'll take it over, mark all of the holes, take the post to a pre-drill station. We're going to have part of the crew doing all the pre-drilling. And then we'll bring it all back in place, install them in place with our stainless steel hardware, and then it'll be lunchtime. Yeah, and, and just a tip when you're working with the crew, um, label not just the measurement, but the location. So these are alphabetized for our layout. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and that makes sure that everybody is going to be in the right place at the right time. Hopefully, six letters of the alphabet won't be too confusing. And this saw does cut a 4x4 post with a 10-inch blade. <laughs> How about that? Ah, that just became about $50 more valuable, Max. <clears throat> okay, those are only 80 pounds each, eh? Holy cow. It works. That's great. That's, uh, that's not terrible. No. All right. Now, since we're dealing with hardwood, we're just using a sanding block. Give it a quick scuff. Get those little, little deburring action, I guess we'll call it, off the wood. Make sure that we finish making it as nice as possible. This only takes a second. And it makes the difference between looking at your deck going, oh, I wish I'd done that, versus I'm glad I did that. Here we go. Ready to roll. Now we seal the ends and then we'll mark them all, pre-drill our holes and off we go to the races. So we just ripped off a piece of cardboard, put it up against the saddle, made a template for this, drilled it, and translated all that information onto these posts. So now we're pre-drilling all the posts before we put them in place. This will be really fast. And then when we're done, we'll flip them over and template the other side. Okay, so now it's time to drop our 100 pound posts into position. Ha ha ha! Do 
dear lord. Now, we got these pre-drilled, so it's just a matter of driving it. Not as concerned about how level they are at this point. All of this is gonna have a certain amount of flexibility and we will get it all tied together. That's right. Get up on here. You go ahead, Sam, and I'll pass it to you when you get up there. Okay. So just, just get up. Like just that. climb up, yeah. Okay. So where you want to hold it, so in front of the beam. Like this. Just there. Just there. Yep. Okay. You really went on the wrong side of that post there. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crawl up on that thing. <clears throat> okay. I got my side. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Okay. You want to go help him? Mike, I got yeah, this side. Got Go it. help him. Yep. Okay, we're on. So let's just hold nice and steady here. Let the post uh, carry all the weight. This is temporary. That's temporary. <clears throat> and that should hold all that in place. I'm going to put a second so it can't twist. All right, here we go. That's not going anywhere. Yay! All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna cut our support posts to go uh, from the top to the middle, and then from here to the other outside corner. We're gonna do this by measuring down at the saddles because it's the law of angles in math. Anytime you have something that's square, it has exactly the same dimensions, top and bottom. So as long as I cut my post based on the saddles and put it up top, automatically squares on my frame up. So my distance here from the outside to the middle of this one is 85 and a half. I'm gonna take off an inch and a half that represents the thickness of that post here. So I need a piece that's 84 inches. Boom, done. Love it. <laughs> on this one, we'll go 87 and 5 eighths. Okay, <laughs> so we're using Simpson Strong Tie Decorative Structural Fastener. This stuff here will actually hold this pergola together regardless of weather conditions. And we just have to be careful because we have to pre-drill everything. We can't assemble it as we go. So I'm just making sure that when we put our beam in position, I'm ready to attach it all. That's that one. Okay. All right, can you come over here and put that level on this beam then, please? Okay. So, Sam, you're yeah. leaning that way, right? This way. And you're leaning towards him. Yeah. What we want is that gap close at the top. All right. There we go. Yep, we're good. Now, since we're not attaching this to the, the house, we're going to bolt this into the other floating deck just to give it some more stability. Beautiful. Okay. We're gonna use this as a, a cross brace. Yeah. So I can start with a. All right, good, thank you.
we're gonna put that side up okay right okay. and then lift this side up okay there's an inch and a half overhang on the front board yeah. but it actually goes all the way in yeah don't try to fight it all the way in at the, out of the beginning okay all right just get it up there get it up get that inch and a half on then we'll fight over here and then we can okay. set it in place once it's in place everybody has to kind of work together to hold this thing together until i get the screws in Good, Max. Now up. So here we are, we're gonna put in our inside corner stabilizers now. now. Of course, being hardwood, everything has to be pre-drilled. So we just wanna make sure that our angles are absolutely perfect. Let's, uh, let's put the bolt in this first before we lift it up. Get a break, please! Ah, oh. well, you know, just a little bit of nice weather. Instead, I, you know, like, what? <laughs> I'm on the edge of the earth. I feel like I'm standing on top of Mount Everest. It's cold. The winds are 50 kilometers an hour. I'm gonna try to install a sail. I think I'm crazy. We gotta stretch this out so I know the shape again. I think what I'm gonna do for now, I'm just gonna temporarily hang it like that. One of those two-inch steel bolts. Oh. So shady in here. It's this. <laughs> so shady. Perfect. Okay. So that one does go up there. Uh, there. There we go, we're all finished our pergola. We got her built, we got her supported, and we got her sales up. And a big shout out to Color Tree. Uh, we found them on Amazon, so you can follow our link to see them, or put a link to the Color Tree in the description below if you want to order custom sizes, because they will do that for you. All right, so listen, this has been a lot of project. It has great shade. If you're looking to do a DIY pergola at home, this is something to consider, because these sales are actually a lot less expensive than any wood option, and they give you 100% sun coverage. And if you want to see how this project turns out, click the link right here and we'll show you how this sucker looks when it's all oiled up and beautiful.